Howdy, folks. Welcome to another episode of Ordnance Lab. I'm Sean, and Ben is hanging out here and making sure that we don't forget that he's ready to go home and Allie's pacing around here, so she may make an entrance. Um, actually, here she comes, um, along with the cat. So anyways, what we're going to talk about in this video... Hello, Allie. I know. I'm excited to see you, too. Come on. Come on. Hop, hop. Come on. Come on. Here you go. Okay. Um, yes, I know. All right. Anyways... Um, so what we're going to talk about during this video is going to be just some of the general stuff with explosives, what they do. There's going to be nothing earth shattering in this video that like, oh my God, never been done before kind of thing. It's going to be more talking about like, hey, what do you actually do with this stuff? A lot of the stuff that we've sat there and held up on other videos was like, hey, here's this. We never really talked about what you did with it. So this is the goal to just, just discuss some of the stuff that we have and then what you actually do with it. Some of it's self-explanatory, but some of it may not be. Starting off with like the low explosives, everyone knows about this stuff. This right here is the smokeless powder that you use typically for your sport and firearms and things like that. We color a little bit outside the lines with it and use it to make fragmentation grenades and some other stuff where we have to actually control it as explosives. But you all know what that right there is generally used for. Same thing with black powder. Now we have some adventures coming up with black powder where we're going to be making cannonballs with them that actually go boom. But if you're using it in a, for sporting purposes, you also don't need an FBL for this one. So that's kind of self-explanatory. Now, here's some of our shock tube. This right here, we've talked about this before also. It's got a little bit of PETN on the inside. That you hit it with a little bit of an impulse. It'll go down there and you can actually see it whenever you're watching the... Um, the uh, the detonation, you'll see it go through the line like whenever it's dark, and it's really cool to see that, and it'll go out there and hit it. So this right here is also controlled as low explosives, but this right here has to be stored in a magazine just like any other explosive material. Another item that's stored as low explosives is also smoke grenades. This right here is a CS grenade, but a smoke grenade is stored the same way. You can store it as low explosives and use this right here for all kinds of different things from you know marking your position, if you've just got smoke grenades and you can also use it for crowd control, obscuring movement, things like that. It's always funny when you watch, you know, the war movies and there's like, oh my God, there's a sniper. And everyone's got like smoke grenades dangling from their, um, their, their battle rattle. And no one thinks like, hey, let's throw out a smoke grenade before we go get that dude that's pinned down by the sniper. But then of course, I'm sure that plenty of y'all have also been yelling at, um, war movies and whatnot. They gotta throw out that Jake's favorite movie is The Hurt Locker. He absolutely loves that movie, the most realistic EOD film ever. So moving on to some of our high explosive stuff and Allie's getting interested in that because we're gonna be featuring something for her here in a second. First off, let's start off with plastic explosives. Everybody likes that. They're always like romance in the movies, like, oh my God, we got C4. And then when you actually get C4, you're like, okay, cool. It really doesn't do anything that spectacular. But what we have here is we have, well, first of all, Allie and Ben's spirit animal. You see, y'all have that right there. I know, both of y'all like this right here. This is data sheet. Now, this is functionally similar to C4. It's not C4. And it was funny, someone in one of the comments was like, oh my God, data sheet's totally different than C4. Like, okay, cool story, bro. Um, it still goes boom in our claymores pretty well. This is typically used for just a myriad of applications. We use it mostly for um, the claymores. We also use it for initiating some of our charges where you use just a little bit of it to make sure that it sets off the high explosives in some of our shaped charges. And you can also, of course, use cookie cutter stuff to cut out your favorite shapes. We also did one here for Buddy. Um, Buddy's running around doing cat stuff. He was up in the rafters earlier staring down at us, like plotting against us. But that's what it's also good for. Another type of plastic explosives coming out of Czech Republic is going to be Simtex. This right here is a ball of Simtex that Jake actually synthesized using his um, chemistry degree as opposed to my history degree. And he made this right here from scratch. We're going to be making using this right here for claim wars. This stuff is actually super expensive to be able to buy in the United States. I'm talking about 300 bucks a pound or so to be able to get it, plus all the delivery fees and everything that go into it. So it was a lot easier for us to be able to make it, but it's still not cheap for us to be able to make. Now, moving on to what's, this is pretty much the similar to dynamite. This is actually called Ready Prime. And this right here is a really useful explosive for just general blasting. If you got to get through rock or whatnot, um, this is a great one to use. It's fairly cheap. And we've actually used it also to make hand grenades and things like that, just because it's readily available and it's rather inexpensive. And this can also be used for initiating things like ANFO, like ammonium nitrate and things like that. They usually use a TNT booster 
um, instead. Unfortunately, we don't have any TNT at the moment. We'll be getting some later. Now, moving on to some of the cooler stuff we've got is one of the, these right here are linear shape charges. And we actually just did a job the other day with our sister company, Texas Explosives and Blasting Services, where we had a company was looking to puncture a air tank in a very controlled manner to see what happens if you punctured one air tank in a dual air tank system, would the punctured air tank damage the second one? So what we did is we used just a little bit, about an inch of shape charge like this with a little bit of C4 on there. We hit it and were able to puncture it in a very controlled manner. And it was a very good test in forum. So explosives like this right here have very niche applications. And there's a myriad of different options you can use when it comes to shape charges. You get conical shape charges, flex flexible shape charges, rigid linear shape charges. This is a thousand different things. We're, we understand how explosives work, but we're also not going to pretend that we're explosives engineers like the guys that you use to drop a building or whatnot in the middle of downtown um, Houston. So also this uh, high explosives is going to be deck cord. Now deck cord, it's really funny. A lot of folks when they're like, oh my God, deck cord, think that it does all these magical things. Um, it really doesn't do anything too magical, but it looks just like string and you can actually use it for string. When uh, we first got Allie, I forgot to bring the leash. So I took her for a walk uh, with a line of deck cord. Some people were bitching quite loud on the internet um, about that. Well, I thought it was hilarious. I know Allie, but you've grown up since then. So deck cord's really cool because what you can do is you can use it for a lot of different things like I was talking about. You can use it for a booster. We have some of the binary explosives where what happens is that they're so insensitive that you have to use a, our caps sometimes are not strong enough. Jake makes sure that ours are strong enough, but some of the factory caps that we get aren't strong enough to be able to reliably set it off. So what we'll do sometimes is just cut off a little piece of deck cord to put it on there and have that detonate to, to boost the cap and enhance the, ch the chances of the charge blowing up. You can also use it to combine charges where if you've got, let's say, like when we blow up trees and things like that, like we'll often have separate charges on there, but we don't want to burn up our caps. So what we'll do is we'll link them together with deck cord. So when one goes, it's going to go with a whole bunch of other ones. And it's also really useful whenever you don't want to put your cap into something like the napalm bomb that we're working on. You'll see in some of those videos where what we did is we have our own cap that we think is waterproof, but there's no real point and risk in it if we dunk it in there and for some reason the seal on it doesn't work and then the cap is a dud. Whenever what we can do is we just run a little bit of debt cord out of the uh, barrel and then we tape it on there and we just put the cap onto here with the charge going into the barrel. So whenever it goes off, it's a fuse basically and it goes down, sets off the main charge in there. And so this is a, it's such a really flexible thing to use. This right here is 50 grain deck cord, which is kind of the standard just to use for a variety of different things. But you can get some really small grain stuff like 15 grain deck cord and you can get up to 400 grain deck cord, which is basically explosives on a rope. And that right there is a lot of fun to go play with. Unfortunately, we don't have any of that right now, but it's pretty cool. So before we get into destructive devices, of course, thermite grenades, we've talked about this, how it's kind of funny that a thermite grenade is not a destructive device, even though a thermite grenade is obviously designed to be something that is destructive and it's a device. But since it doesn't explode, ATF does not consider it to be a destructive device, only explosives. Now, Moving on to destructive devices. So we're gonna do a separate video where we talk about some of the uh, various less lethal weapons, but this right here is a sting ball grenade. These right here are um, less lethal grenades. You can get them in a couple of different flavors. You can get it here where it doubles your pleasure and doubles your fun with a OC charge that goes off. Um, these right here are all controlled as destructive devices for less lethal use, typically crowd control or um, prison use. And then you've got your uh, noise flash distraction device or a flashbang. This right here is typically used for a wide variety of things and there's different sizes of them. We'll talk, we'll make a separate video about the various types of uh, noise flash distraction devices. This right here is generally used for crowd control and tactical situations where you wanna get the drop on someone. Fragmentation grenades. Well, these right here are definitely not less lethal. And typically these right, this is a um, defensive hand grenade where it's designed to be thrown in a defensive position as opposed to an offensive hand grenade. We'll do a separate video on the different types of grenades, but it's pretty obviously that this right here is, um, or pretty obvious what this right here is used for. And then finally we have our claymore here. Typically a claymore is, be, is used for whenever you're initiating an ambush. That, hey, you're in your ambush position, you initiate it with this. The kill radius goes out to about 50 meters 
They say out to about 100 meters, it'll still cause injuries, but you're gonna reliably get your kills in at 50 meters. But an additional advantage of this right here is whenever you initiate the ambush with this thing going off, even if the people that you're trying to attack are not directly hit by the fragmentation, it's gonna rattle their, it's gonna uh, ring their bell pretty good. This is one of those things that thing goes off in your face or you're near it and you're not in a covered position, you're gonna sit there and just be shocked because then you wanna immediately open up with your mass casualty producing weapon like a machine gun and everyone else opens up with their individual weapons. So these right here again are typically used in an ambush, but they're also really good for defensive positions whenever Charlie's in the wire kind of thing like that and put them out typically in areas that you can't observe or whenever you're doing your planning of your defensive position, when you see points where the enemy you think would they be hiding in there uh, seeking cover, this right here is great to put in there behind a uh, rock or something like that when they jump into there. Th something they think is covered, they get clack clack and um, clack clack goes the gat and that's the end of them. So, all right, again, this video right here, let's not live. This, there was nothing revolutionary we talked about in this video. We've talked about a bunch of this other stuff before, but we just wanted to kind of address like some of these things, like what you actually use it for. And we'll be employing it as we go forward. But one of our goals is we always want to offer something that, hey, here's an explanation of some stuff that you may see in the movies or you may see on the news or whatever. And hopefully to dispel some of the rumors. Oh, Allie, you're going to give me five. I oh, know. I love you too. We'll go walk into bed. Um, all right. Anyways, hope you enjoyed our video. Please remember our Patreon account. We None of this stuff happens for free, and um, we definitely appreciate all the support we can get. Also, if you're a company that's looking to do R&D on something, we can help you out with that. If it involves explosive weapons, we can do explosives, explosive weapons, firearms, all kinds of different things that we can do to simulate threats or whatever else that you need to do, go ahead and hit us up on Facebook or send us an email at info at ordnance-lab.com. Thanks for your time, and we'll see y'all next time. This video is brought to you by Texas Explosive and Blasting Services. We provide research and development, explosive testing, training, and sales of all forms of explosives and devices. Visit us at our website at txebs.com.